Now, the World Bank is backing Namibia's renewable energy integration ambitions. In a first for the Southern African nation, Linda has approved financing to the tune of nearly $139 million for an energy project geared towards improving the country's transmission network and integrate renewable energy into its electricity grid. The country's electricity utility, NAMPOWER, will implement the project. Andre Barlow, Head of Treasury and Strategic Finance at NAMPOWER, joins us with more detail. Andre, an absolute pleasure and a good afternoon to you. Good afternoon and thank you for the invitation. Prince Andre, let's talk about the renewable energy rollout that Namibia has maybe seen to date and how this uh, funding necessitates, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the next part of that rollout. Yeah, so I think just first of all, the, 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 the mainly the transmission line that's been financed is the first priority why it was necessitated was due to uh, technical reliability limits that was reached. So that was the first box that we had to tick because due to security of supply issues. And then I think the other additional value that uh, what we call the hours Kukrebom line, which is just in about 460 kilometers, which is connecting the southern part and the central part of Namibia. The importance thereof is to, in future, to facilitate uh, further e expansion of uh, renewable energy generation options. Uh, I don't know how all the listeners know uh, Namibia, but the Namibia's main customer demand is sitting in the central and northern part of Namibia, and this will connect the southern part to the central part of Namibia. So, uh, and this would facilitate in future growth in uh, generation capacity. Uh, we know the region is also there's capacity constraints, uh, and I think. Uh, Electricity is often as a catalyst for growth and economic development, so this helps for future generation to, to expand. Uh, I think the other opportunities are that which in Namibia we 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 blessed with diverse supply and generation options in the renewable space. Uh, very good radiation, so solar is uh, on the top priority at this stage, and then the second would be also uh, excellent uh, wind capacity in the Luderitz and Oranje Munt area which is still to the southern part of Namibia. So, yeah, so I think that's a key thing. And then the other one, what is quite key for, is that Namibia is still a net importer of electricity. So this is definitely a drive to improve and get to self-sufficiency. And hopefully in the in the near future, also lowering the cost of electricity. Currently, we, in the next three years, we should bring online, you know, and our capacities is quite smaller than our neighbors, but we should bring in around additional 300 megawatts, which is mainly there's almost 100 megawatts that's coming from the Ludwig area with this IPP wind generation and the new additional 120 megawatts of PV, solar PV that will be added to the grid. And then we also, uh, which is not maybe highlighting coming out as strong as it should be in, in this facility from the World Bank as well, there's a second component as well where we would look at a second battery that Namibia will implement. So. We're still in the learning phase in respect of uh, battery energy storage solutions. We know, uh, Andre, that the rollout of transmission networks is not necessarily, uh, you know, simple work. There's a high execution uh, risk that uh, comes along with it. Keen to get your thoughts on all of that as the funding comes on board. Uh, you know, where are we in terms of mapping out how the network uh, will, uh, you know, be laid out? Uh, and if you are maybe concerned about uh, being able to execute that within uh, the intended period and within the intended costs. Yeah, so I, I think we, we, we as NAPA, we can pride ourselves. We we have a very strong technical team. This is obviously not new to us. We have done uh, projects in excess of 900 kilometers. We recently completed a, a similar project close to 300 kilometers, which is a similar technology that we will use for the hours uh, Kukrebom line. We recently completed the hours Geris, which is the, just a bit north of Wintuk, connecting that to the north. Uh, so I, I don't think that for us that is a, a challenge. I think what is obviously a challenge for us is, is more on the financial side is the volatility in markets. Uh, and predominantly when we look at these larger infrastructure projects, uh, the big cost driver is the volatility in the currency. So the moment dollar is still picked to the rand one on one. So the volatility in, in the rand to the dollar is obviously quite a big challenge for us and we need to deploy strong hedging uh, strategies to, to mitigate that, that cost overrun. Uh, 
Having said that, because if you look at this transmission line, it will take pr approximately three years to construct. So, yeah, difficult to say what the currency will do, especially this year with elections coming up. So interesting, more than interesting, probably. But yeah, it is what it is, and we, we need to execute our mandate and move forward. Also, can you make to touch on uh, just the empowering of communities here uh, using skills, uh, jobs as you lay out this transmission line over this period? Andre, are there plans for that and how deliberate is NAMPOW in ensuring uh, that you bring these communities along in this journey? Yeah, so I think I think it's a challenge for us because if you look at infrastructure generally, we it's a temporary employer. We this this employment is created during the construction period. And we try to do in our best ever means in the uh, in the contracting side to especially for semi and unskilled labor that that is Namibian, uh, and yeah, the unfortunate thing is around the majority is 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 more important goods. But then we we when we do the actual implementation and execution of of the project, we we do uh, prescribe and set aside that we can get as much local content in it. And I think we can pride ourselves there is. Uh, some local companies that actually have gone through the ranks and have got the experience. Uh, you know, years ago we did, we, like I said, look at our experience. We build up certain capacities within country, so we can we can deploy that. So I think that is a. Uh, and I think some of these contractors have actually worked across the, in the region as well. So I think that's the benefit that it brought. So I think electricity itself needs to have a more regional based focus for collaboration and and. Uh, and opportunities that's there. We also know that Namibia is at the center of hydrocarbon exploration at this point, Andre. Let's talk about the balancing act that comes here in terms of, uh, you know, the carbon footprint of the country and as well as the intended energy mix. Sure, yeah. So I, I think we can say, if you look at the current generation capacity of Namibia, it, it, it's, I think we're probably one of the greenest uh, uh, generation mix that we have, although we can say we we do import, and the plan is definitely to remain with renewable energy and, and approve that. So I think issues around climate change, all of that plays a role in how you do your project selection. So, yeah, I think for so for the near term, uh, you know, we can say I think we'll, we'll push further with solar and potentially with wind if we can evacuate, because what the challenge is with wind is we need to, it makes only sense above 300 megawatts because part of generation which is often overlooked is the transmission side of it. Transmission evacuation is quite crucial to this. And yeah, then I think we, we're in for an interesting uh, next few years. Uh, I know the feasibility is still be done on green hydrogen. We have to see how they develop. And then on the other side, you know, Mavi has also got the good oil finds now recently. So uh, the gas opportunities might be there as well. So it's a it, it will be a really interesting uh, next few years to put to say what's the longer term. But uh, I think we, we focus now on what we need to do and then we will sit down with our line ministry and that uh, we'll get to the next determination. But I think having said these, I think these options really only becomes really plausible after, you know, say 2030. So they're probably more in the medium term. Well, Andre, an absolute pleasure hearing from you, and we'll keep a track of all those exciting developments there. That was Andre Barlow, Head of Treasury and Strategic Finance at NAMPOWER.